it real I'm independent, I don't need no deal I'm Jaws on the beat, I got flow that kills Do my thing with a few G's, Lauren Hill Okay guys, so here we are in the logic and in this video I'm going to show you how we can use the studio strings inside Logic Pro. Let's dive into it. And a big thanks to the channel sponsor, DistroKid. DistroKid is a music distribution service and the best way to get your music out to all of the modern streaming services fast, efficiently, and within an independent artist's budget. Check out the description below for a discount today. Okay, so in this project here, I've very simply got uh, some sets of chords and I've taken some notes away. And all five of these patches are slight variations of default presets of studio strings inside Logic. So I've done nothing particularly special. I've literally got some chords, taken some notes away, and loaded presets, nothing else. The end result is just this flurry that I've built here. I'm just going to explain to you how we can use studio strings to build this kind of thing. So let's solo out this first one here. I've got this as four chords, all on the lower register. Uh, and for the most part, just using two notes. Just got a triad there on the third chord, just because it sounded right. Yeah, if we solo it out, we've got this. Okay, now it looks like we've just got these long elongated chords, right? But as you can hear, the first note just kind of taps in it. We don't actually get any of that sustain till the second chord comes in. Let's just have a quick look at how we do that. Let's load up the patch here. Now to get your patches, they're all in the browser here. They appear under studio strings. And to add something in, we actually already have to have a channel for it to work on. So we can do, we could add a channel here. We could do instrument and empty channel strip, for example. And you can see we've got a blank one here. What we'll do, I'll just change this into the cellos. So we've got studio strings here and studio cellos. It's going to load that patch up for us. And what I'll do, I'll just bring this down. We can use the same thing again. All right. The way that works, these first two chords here, well, I've got an articulation over here set to staccato. So it plays the staccato articulation of the instrument just here. And the next one is set to sustain. The default is sustain. Uh, and the last one is actually set to an accented sustain, which gives that slightly different feel at the end. So it's very simple to create those. And well, that's what we've done with pretty much everything here. I've got the studio cellos again, but this time they're an octave up and we've got much more complex chords here layered in. They just give us all our high end. So when we put the two together, we've got our really low body and our big high swelling cellos. All right, so then adding on to that, we've got these solo violins. Oh wait, hang on, they're delivering some kind of flurry. Well, that was really simple to do as well. So much like before, We've set the chords again. This time I've put them all in spiccato. Literally everything here is spiccato. Uh, and we've switched on the arpeggiator just over here, just in our MIDI control. And that's just going on 16th. And that just arpeggiates through those chords in spiccato fashion because that's the articulation being told to play. this one. We've gone Piz and we've put that over to the left. Exactly the same technique, except I've stripped down some of the notes and the range it can play over. And last but not least. We've kept that centralized and these are playing staccato and they all layer nicely together. They're sharing some of the same notes in some places, they're different octave and in some places the notes are only being created by one instrument. That's what gives that real fullness, but also allows you to hear all of the melody and everything going on. Now 
Now there's lots of other things we can do to really make these our own. Let's just have a quick look at the cellos again, because this should be a nice thing to demonstrate it on. If we use our little drop down here, we've got some uh, controls like a dynamic controller uh, and a vibrato controller, both on the modulation of the keyboard, for example. Now I've just switched dynamic controller over to breath just because it's easier to show that we can just do this by basically sending MIDI channel two is by default breath. Now we need to switch on dynamics via CC. And then over here, make sure this is in region, switch it to breath under the MIDI control. Uh, and we can actually just draw in some nice dynamic control. We can just make it swell and swell up a bit more and swell up a bit more on the last one, just to get some more of a dynamic feel into these chords here. But we can also apply that to things like this. So let's set this up in exactly the same way, just so we can repeat that. Let's just load up strings. We're going to put dynamics via CC. I'm going to put this over to breath. Unnecessary step, but just so we're following the same protocol as we did before. And we'll go to MIDI control, set that to breath as well. And then let's have it so these sweep up ever increasing amounts. just add into the performance of the strings overall. If I'm completely honest, those are the main functions that Studio Strings has. The rest is really down to experimentation and things you would like to do and what you want to achieve. But that is how it functions inside Logic because it's a little bit odd compared to everything else. If you would like more videos on Studio Strings and really diving into it with me, leave me a comment below and we'll absolutely do that. I do like playing around with this a lot. I used it pretty heavily in my uh, Liquid Drum and Bass from Scratch track, which I'll try and remember to link below for you. If the video was helpful for you guys, please bash a like on it. It does help me out massively with this channel and I look forward to seeing you on the next one.